Hello, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to learn how to calculate percent composition and how to use percent composition to calculate chemical formulas. So the percent composition of a compound is the percent by mass of each element in that compound. And since percent is based on 100, then when you calculate, the percent composition must therefore always equal 100. So the first thing we do is we use the chemical formula of the substance to calculate its molar mass. And then for each element, we divide the number of grams of that element um, by the molar mass of the compound. So you're looking at each element's contribution to the total molar mass. And then multiply by 100 to get your actual percent. So let's do an example. Let's calculate the percent composition of water. So we're going to calculate the percent of hydrogen and the percent of oxygen in water. So we'll start by calculating the molar mass. So 2 times hydrogen is 2 times its atomic mass, which is the 1.008. So we get 2.016. And then we do the same for oxygen, remembering that hydrogen gets uh, the thousands place when we pull its um, atomic mass off the periodic table. And for all el other elements, we use the hundredths place. So then adding those together, we'll get a molar mass of 18.016, which rounds to 18.02. Remember, molar masses should always be rounded. Even when they contain hydrogen, they should always be rounded to the hundredths place. So now the percent hydrogen is going to be hydrogen's contribution, which is 2.016 to the formula, uh, divided by the molar mass times 100. And so for hydrogen, it comes out to 11.187. And I'm rounding to the tenths place here, so 11.2%. And then you'll notice, and I didn't uh, get too fancy here, but you'll notice that grams are going to cancel out. And so again, your percent will just be a percent. And then for oxygen, again, it's the 16 grams divided by the molar mass. And again, grams cancels out. And we're going to end up with 88.79, which I'll round to 88.8. .8. And so you can see that 11.2 plus 88.8 .8 equals 100, so the percent composition by mass of water is 11.2% hydrogen and 88.8% oxygen. So let's try a different compound. Let's try potassium chromate. So first thing is we're going to calculate its molar mass, so 2 times potassium is going to be 78.2, 1 times chromium is going to be 52 grams, 4 times oxygen is 64, add them together, so our molar mass is 194.20. So now for each element, so starting with percent potassium, so again you'll see it's the amount of potassium in the formula divided by the molar mass times 100, so we get in this case 40.27%, and you'll notice again that grams cancels out. And then for chromium, again chromium's contribution to molar mass divided by molar mass, grams once again cancels out and we get 26.78% and the percent of oxygen, again oxygen's contribution divided by molar mass times 100 and so we end up with 32.95. So the percent composition for potassium chromate is 40.27 or 40.3% potassium, 26.78 or 26.8% chromium and 32.95 or 33 if you wanted to round 33.0 percent um, oxygen. And again grams cancels out. So the reason we learn about percent composition is it gets used as a conversion factor. And I'm going to point out that in a lab setting you try to make a particular compound, you synthesize it, and you get what you think is your correct compound. And then you do some tests to prove that, you know, you have what you thought you made. And one of the first things that you do is you send out for elemental analysis. So 
percent composition is what you'll get back when you send it out for elemental analysis, and that can then be turned into a converting conversion factor. So in converting from percent composition to grams, you always assume 100 grams, and that allows you to turn the percent into grams. And then from there, you can go on and calculate formulas. So the first thing you typically calculate is the empirical formula. And the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the atoms of the element in a compound. And we use percent composition to calculate empirical formulas. So again, if I sent something out for elemental analysis and I thought I knew what the empirical formula was, I would use percent composition to check. So in calculating empirical formula, the first thing you do is you get the percent composition and you're going to convert that to grams by assuming 100 grams. And then for each element, you'll go from grams of the element to moles using the atomic mass. And then you're going to divide each element by whatever the smallest number of moles is to get your ratio of element to element to element. So 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 2 to 1 to 3, whatever your ratio ends up being. So let's take an example given a compound that contains 40.27% potassium, 26.78% chromium, and 32.95% oxygen. What is its empirical formula? So number of moles of potassium is equal to the number of grams, so if it's 40.27%, I'm going to say I have in a 100 gram sample 40.27 grams. Using molar mass, that turns out to be 1.0299 moles of potassium. And I'm not rounding to sig figs at this point. And then for chromium, I'm doing the same thing. My number of moles of chromium is going to be converting 26.78% in a 100 gram sample to 26.78 grams molar mass, and that computes to 0.515 mole of chromium. And then number of moles of oxygen, same procedure. My percent was 32.95, so 32.95 grams times molar mass, and that comes out to 2.059. So if you just look at this, your ratio is 1.0299 to 0.515 to 2.059. Zero five nine, so my ratio, but I want it to be whole numbers. So the easiest way to get from these numbers to whole numbers would be to find whatever my smallest number of moles is and divide everybody by that smallest number of moles. And my smallest number of moles is 0.515 mole of chromium. So I'm just going to take that number of moles and divide everybody by that so that I can just get a whole number ratio. So for potassium, I would take the number of moles up here, 1.0299, divided by whichever element had the smallest number of moles, which is 0.515, and that comes out to 1.9998, which rounds to 2 as a whole number, 2 moles of potassium. Do the same thing for chromium, so 0.515 divided by 0.515 is 1, so it's 2 moles of potassium to 1 mole of chromium, and for oxygen, doing the same thing, our 2.059 divided by 0.515, that comes to 3.998, rounding to a whole number, it's 4 moles. So my ratio is 2 Ks to 1 mole of Cr to 4 moles of oxygen. So that means my empirical formula is K2, K2, Cr1, Cr04, O4. O4. So I know this probably seems like an exercise in tedium. However, in the real world of a chemist, this would be something that would be absolutely necessary to do. You want to make sure that the compound that you're reporting you made actually matches the elemental analysis for that compound. So the next thing we do is calculate molecular formulas using this same kind of information, this percent composition information. The molecular formula is either the same as its experimentally determined empirical formula, or it is some simple whole number multiple of it. And that comes up quite a bit with um, organic chemistry. So you might have 
C2H3 as the empirical formula, but the actual molecular formula is a thousand times that. So again, the molecular formula is the so-called true formula. If you think about hydrogen peroxide, which has the empirical formula HO, but its actual molecular formula is H2O2 because it's a 2 to 2 or 1 to 1 ratio. So with organic chemistry, it comes up quite a bit. So in calculating molecular formulas, we divide the molecular formula mass by the empirical formula mass in order to get that ratio. And that gives you the number of empirical formula units in a molecule of the true compound. And so you need that ratio to figure out what your multiplier is. So the formula you use is that the ratio is equal to the molecular formula mass, also known as molar mass, divided by the empirical formula mass that you calculate. So here is a sample calculation. What is the molecular formula of a compound with a molar mass of 64.20 that has the empirical formula CH4? So the first thing you do is calculate your empirical formula mass. So 1 times carbon is 12.01, 4 times hydrogen is 4.032, add them together, and that gives you an empirical formula mass of 16.042. We'll round to the hundredths place, 16.04. So now we can look at our ratio, and we're going to take the molecular formula mass, which is our 64.20, divided by our empirical formula mass, which is our 16.04. I was lazy and left out the units here. This would be grams per mole divided by grams per mole. And we get the number 4.00, which rounds to 4. So our ratio of our empirical formula to our molecular formula is 4. So the molecular formula is 4 times the empirical formula, which was, remember, C1H4. So our true formula for this substance is C4H16. So we will be doing some worksheets that go with this, but for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.